Um, my name is uh, Yakosa, Yakosa Lopes. Um, but my friends call me Yaki. Uh, I am a Malawian, um, but I'm currently staying in Portugal. My husband is Portuguese. I'm a mom. I've got three kids. Um, I guess that's it. I'm a full-time mom. So, yeah. Hey there, wonderful viewers. Welcome back to GH Africa TV, where we bring you stories from around the world that will make you laugh, learn, and feel inspired. Today, we are thrilled to have you with us once again. So tell us, before we start with our conversation, you know a lot of people want to visit Malawi. So tell us, I want you to tell us something about your home country before we begin with our conversation. Malawi is, um, we call it the warm heart of Africa. Um, it has a lot of friendly people. We have um, good food. We have nice people, nice culture, cultural dances. Um, we have our beautiful Lake Malawi. Uh, we have a lot of tourist attraction uh, areas. We have Luwonde National Park, for example. We have um, we have our famous uh, uh, celebrational, I can say, seasonal uh, activities, social activities that happen every year. We have a sun festival where a lot of artists come and perform. And it's more like a party, a big party. And we also have the Lake of Stars, just to mention a few. Nice one. So let's start with our conversation. So why Portugal and what made you choose Portugal over other countries? Okay. So my husband is Portuguese. He's, uh, he's in a national of Portugal. So we met in Malawi. Yeah. He came to work in Malawi. That's where we met at work. Now, if you ask me, I would say Portugal is not a country that I would have randomly chosen if I was just thinking, oh, let me go abroad to, 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 to stay in abroad. No, it's not some, it's not a country that would have, I would have, you know, you're right. It's people, Africans, we usually, we talk about like a uh, UK, uh, United States, Canada, you know, but I'm here because of my husband. Yeah. That's what I can say. <laughs> Great. So um, let's look at some of the challenges that many face or struggles that many face whenever they travel abroad. Even um, since you are in Portugal, so you can even tell about yours. The biggest challenge, I can't lie to you, Nino, the biggest challenge is language. Oh my gosh. <laughs> language. Oh. <laughs> you know, they, they speak Portuguese. People know how to, a few people know how to speak English, but I just feel like even those who know how to speak English, they don't like to communicate English. Their national language is Portu Portuguese. So communication is in Portuguese. Um, so I, it's hard for me. You know how it's easy for kids to learn a new language, uh, but for an adult, most of the times it helps when you get a course a language course or you go to school to learn it i try to do lessons online self lessons online but it's still hard and you know as an adult uh, i'm kind of shy to practice my portuguese because i'm ashamed or like maybe i'm pronouncing this wrong maybe it's not right um but one of the biggest challenges is language because everything even in church, if I go to church, I have to, the mass is in, uh, the mass is in Portuguese. If I go to the shops, I need to communication, to communicate in Portuguese. The second one is, you know how people overseas, everybody minds their own business. And that's a good thing, but also sometimes it's not a good thing. You know how in Africa, we are used to exist in communities. We have neighbors we can talk to someone that we go to church with we can talk to someone that maybe you see in your street we can talk to and be friends but here 
nothing. You are all alone. It's like everybody minds their own business. So for me, I don't have friends here. And to be honest, that's a bomber because um, apart from my husband's family, it's just me and the kids. So, you know, in Africa, you already know it's communities and that gives you enough moral support. Here, you don't have any moral support. You just have to be doing your own thing while everybody else is doing their own thing. So that's another thing that's like, oh, the biggest challenge here. Okay, I think because everybody else is busy, like, you know how everybody is either people are going to school, people are going to work, uh, everybody else is busy uh, trying to make money, trying to do something for their families. And it's, yeah, it's not like in Africa where we you can call a friend, come on, let's go chill. It's it's not every day that happens. It's it happens, but it's not every day. You don't make plans every day to chill with your friends here. You don't. I know. Even if I had friends, yes, everybody is busy doing something productive, you know. But in Malawi, we I think in Africa, or I can say in Malawi, we have a lot of idle time that we can sit around and gossip and talk about nothing, you know. Yeah. So. We, I I grew up in that kind of community. Like I, 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 I'm used to that kind of life where if I'm bored, I can just call a friend. Are you free? If they are free, we can go do something together or we can just go chill. We can, can just, it's, it's like that. For me as a grown up to be used to this kind of life where I feel like I'm just alone and it's just me and the family. It's not easy. My kids are still young. They can get used to this life. They have to play with the siblings. But me, I grew up vibing with my friends. You know how Africans we vibe all the time? There's no vibing here. <laughs> there is no vibing. And oh, it's it's a life that I just have to accept and get used to. But I sometimes I miss my country because of these simple things. Like the other time I made a, vi a video on TikTok simple thing about doing braids you know how uh african girls nigerians ghanians south africans we change our hair like we are changing underwear it's like you can do this hair today and tomorrow you're on a different hairstyle that's us it's it's why it's one of the, the the few things that makes us happy as women you can wear a wig today a yellow wig and tomorrow you're in a pink wig it makes us happy but here, mm, if you hear the cost of your your someone braiding your hair, you would be like, no, this money in my country can pay somebody's rent, you know. So thinking about that, I am like, no, I can't pay hundred euros for braids that I'll have to take out after a a month. No, that's ridiculous. But those are small things for someone it's small things they'll be like no you're worried you are abroad you're worried about here yes i'm worried about here because it's something that i'm used to the versatility that changing hair gives the satisfaction that you get when you i want to do this hairstyle and you can do it so it's a lot of things another random thing i'll give you another another random thing is like driving you know how in africa someone who drives whether it's their car, their parents' car, their husband's car, it's it's a big deal. It gives you like, uh, it's it's the mobility for you. It's easy. You want to go to, to to run an errand, you drive. You want just to go chill somewhere, you drive. For me here, it's not like I can just go to the driving school and do because the lessons are in Portuguese. How am I going to get a driver's license here? Come on, like, so it's like when my husband, my husband, by the way, my husband wakes away from home. He comes home usually in the weekend. So I can't drive. It's frustrating. Like, why can't you just give me the driver's license? I know how to drive. They can't because this is Portugal. Come on. So things like those make me want to say, no, Africa, 
Africa, yes, it, we, we look at it in the economic way that things are bad here, things are not good. Yes, in my country, maybe even in my country, it's even worse. You know, Malawi, how things are, it's even worse. But it's easy to survive in Malawi because even if I want to go to town, I will call my friend with a car. I'll say, like, come on, if you're free, take me to town. I will put money for uh, petrol, for fuel. But here, I can't call anyone because they are busy doing their own thing. You know, my husband is at work. His family, they're at work. I don't have friends. Who am I going to call? Nobody. Yes, nobody. I see. So tell me, what are some of the nice or best places to visit in Portugal? Okay. Um, for me, I would say if you come in summer, the best place to visit is Algarve. I think it's one of the most popular uh, uh, holiday destinations in Portugal. Um, the first time that I came here, I came in summer. I came in August and that time I was not married yet to my husband. Um, he took me there. I was like, wow, this is life. I have arrived. I have, <laughs> I have arrived. It was like, you know how it's, it's like in summer, a lot of people are on holidays. Everybody is in the holiday mood. It's not, it's nothing like Africa. It's nothing like Malawi. It's nothing like I've never seen. Everybody is on beach mode. It's so, ah, oh, it's so interesting to see. It's, it was so interesting to, to experience. I thought at that time, life would be like that all the time. That's what I thought, that life in Portugal is like this all the time. Yeah, so I would say Algarve. And another thing is if for people who like winter stuff and all that, the other place that I know, there is this, maybe I'll pronounce it um, wrong, but I think it's Sarah Dix. The <laughs> Sarah de Estrella. I think it's something like that. It's like in the mountains, so it doesn't always snow in Portugal everywhere. But for people who want to experience snow, like close to where I live, you go up the mountain. It was. It's also nice. It's also nice. And these are the two places that I can uh, talk about. I've also been to Figueira da Foz. I can say it was also a nice place. I also hear about Nazari. I've never been there, but it's I from what I read and what other people say, it's nice as well. Yeah. Ah, oh, one more thing. Uh, Lisbon. Lisbon is the capital city of uh, Portugal. So definitely all the tourists, uh, most of them, they stay there. It's close to the town. Uh, versatility of cultures, a lot of foreigners, English speaking people everywhere, big opportunities, but maybe the biggest challenge is because it's a capital city, big city, it's expensive, but Lisbon is also good. Great. So I want us to play a game here. Um, <laughs> okay. So this game was from one, one of our subscribers. So, um, let me ask you, which which country in Africa has the most attractive or handsome men, from your opinion? <laughs> um, okay, I've never been in uh, a lot of African countries. I've been in uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, um, South Africa. If, okay, South Africa and Ethiopia are just the airports. Um, mm. I've been in Kenya, just the airport. So I'm my 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 answer will be based on social media. The men that I see no on problem. social media. No problem. Yes. I would say Nigeria. <laughs> so why Nigeria? <laughs> you know, because I think I grew up watching Nollywood, a lot of Nigerian movies. Of course I've watched Ghanaian uh, movies as well, but a lot of movies that I grew up watching where nigerian movies and to be honest every now when i look at these actors that we saw oh damn he's hot when we look at them now i'm like wait a minute mm, 
did we say this one was hot? I know they've aged, but I think because we were young. So we grew up at admiring Noso Dobby, Ra Ramsey Noah, um, Jim Ike, <laughs> you know, but overall, even those influencers, um, uh, the 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 you know instagram pages with um these nigerian guys um i think they they still dominate so great one so any advice for anyone who wants to travel abroad being in school work visit tourists any advice for anyone who wants to visit abroad if you are traveling abroad just to get away from malawi to move to, to, to get a better life for yourself, what I can advise is, first of all, I think it's easier to move into countries that are English speaking because learning a, a new language is no joke. Unless you're going there as a student, because if you're a student, I think it's easier to adapt to the learning environment. And then for me, yeah, I think it's easier to move in uh, the, the, these English speaking countries, maybe Iran, Canada, uh, UK, USA, but maybe the biggest challenge is these countries, the visas are very hard because all the Africans wants to go there. Ghanaians, you guys, you are everywhere. You, I have never met one here, but I have never met a Ghanaian in uh, Portugal. We have a lot of Angolans, Mozambicans, um, people from Cape Verde. Yeah but i haven't met a uh, ghanian but i think in in the big cities they are nigerians i heard nigerians are everywhere yeah so my first advice would be your priority should be the english-speaking countries another one another thing that i can say is you just have to what can i say i don't know the expression that I can say, but I'm, I'm going to say it in my local language in Malawi. Kulimba ntima. Like you just have to accept that it is what it is because life in abroad, it's more to what we see in social media, girls dressing nice, looking good, wearing nice outfits, going to have fun. You know, there are some people that are really enjoying life in abroad, but they work hard. They make shifts. They have to work hard for it. The rentals in abroad, they are crazy. The bills, they are crazy. So for someone to have a good life, you really need to work hard. That's why you see some people abroad, they're having a good life just on social media. But back home, they can't even do anything that they can point. When the time is, is come to for them to go back, it's like they never left, you know? So it's not easy to live abroad. It's, it's, it's a different life, a totally different life. So you just have to accept that you are there and remember the reason that you are there. In my case, it's a bit different because I'm here because of love. I'm here because of marriage, you know, <laughs> but the things that, um, I'm experiencing, um, if it was, uh, like, if it, I came here for a greener pasture, maybe I would have a different feeling. Like, I'll give you an example. I don't work. You know why? Because my last born is not three years yet. You know, I, she needs to be three years so that she can go to school and I can go to work. You know how in Africa we are privileged to have mates? We take that for granted. We pay them maybe like equivalent of $30, $50, $20 for them to stay with our kids for the whole month while we go do something else. But here there's nothing like that. So some of these things, it's hard to live in, to, to, to be, to, to, this abroad life is hard for, especially for people with a family. If you just come abroad yourself, life is going to be easy for you because it's just you. But when you have a family, it's totally different. So another thing also is you need to do research because there are a lot of disappointments. We have a lot of expectations and as Africans, before we move to abroad, we have a lot of ex 
<laughs> expectations, you know, especially about money. That's why when someone is abroad all the time, they ask you, auntie, I need, I need help with this. I need help with this. But the life here also is hard. Life is hard everywhere else. Yeah, that's what I can say. Great. So any, 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 any shout outs to um, family, friends, and you can also add up your social media handles to it. Okay. I want to give a quick shout out to my sister, Maneno. I miss you so much. You, oh my gosh, I don't want to cry. She's the, she's just everything to me. I miss her a lot. Um, I also want to give a shout out to my nephew, her son, blessings. Um, Another shout out to my friend, Strivelia Kalua. She's also, oh, she's my rock. She's, we call, we call each other Thela Bay. We can, we can be on a long call and I just, she just makes me feel like uh, home because you know how it is. Like I don't have real friends here, like actual friends I can talk to. So she's the one who I stay on long calls uh, with me. I also want to, Give a very shout out to my good friend, Lopi, a friend that I made on TikTok. She's like a little sister to me. She's, oh, she's so lovely. So shout out to Lopi. Um, we have this amazing woman. She's maybe about 71, 72 years old. She's just hit the spotlight in the music industry and it's crazy. Oh my God. Her name is Jetu. Uh, she released a song, uh, I think, uh, last week or two weeks ago, and it's so trending on YouTube. I think it's about 700 and something views. It's just so amazing to see how a, a woman of her age can be on the spotlight, can have that kind of energy. She's doing shows and she is loved. I just love how Malawians, we are like loving this lady. We are loving this woman. We're giving her support. And you know what? I just want to give a special shout out to Jedu. Jedu, Wakalamba Wafuna, we love you so much. We love you. Also, shout out to uh, her manager, which is her grandson, MD. I just want to say out here, plain and simple, that no matter what other people are saying about her being old and being on the spotlight about her music, but MD, you are doing a very amazing job keep it up and i'm wishing j2 all the amazing opportunities that can ever come her way my socials instagram is yaki the ducky tiktok is yaki black barbie um facebook is yaki lops and that's it yeah